Welcome to Success Talks with Rodney Salisbury. I hope you will support my sponsors who bring you this podcast absolutely free and with limited interruptions. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. I'll get started in just a second. The reviews are in. The latest book from voiceover superstar and coach Rodney Salisbury is another runaway hit. Readers from all over the world are raving about his newest title, Tongue Twisters and Vocal Warm-Ups. You can find this and his other titles at the top of the voiceover bestsellers list on Amazon.com. Gamble and Huff. Kenneth Gamble, born August 11, 1943, in Philadelphia, and Leon A. Huff, born April 8, 1942, in Camden, New Jersey, are an American songwriting and production team credited for developing the Philadelphia soul music genre, also known as Philly Sound of the 1970s. In addition to forming their own label, Philadelphia International Records, Gamble and Huff have written and produced 175 gold and platinum records. And we'll be back after this message. Has anyone ever said to you that you have a nice voice and you should get into voiceovers? Well, this is your chance to find out how to do that online in Rodney Salisbury's voice over online seminar for beginners only. You can find out what it takes to be a voiceover artist. And here's the beauty of this online seminar. You don't have to be there. When you register, you will automatically get a copy of the seminar. Go to my website at rodneysalsbury.com and sign up to Gamble and Huff, one of the greatest writer producing teams ever. When I think about growing up in Detroit and listening to the Motown sound and the popularity of Barry Gordy and Hitsville, U.S. Say. A couple of guys that really caught my ear was Gamble and Huff because of the songs that they wrote, the great songs that were coming out of Philadelphia. The first song that I became familiar with, and at the time I didn't even know that Gamble and Huff wrote it, was a song called I'm Gonna Make You Love Me. Now, it was originally recorded by The Techniques, okay? And then it was covered later by Dee Dee Warwick and later by Diana Ross and the Supremes. And then I heard it when Diana Ross and the Supremes and the Temptations did it together on a special that was on television. That was the first time I heard it. So that was the first time that I learned about Gamble and Huff. Hello everyone, this is Sean Daly for DailyVO.com. I want to tell you about one resource I highly recommend for vocal warm-ups because it takes out all of the guesswork and it was purpose-built with voiceover in mind. It's called Rodney Salisbury's Tongue Twisters and Vocal Warm-Ups with Other Vocal Care Tips. How's that for a title? So in case you don't know, Rodney Salisbury is a top-tier talent and coach, motivational speaker, and author of several books on voice acting, including You Can Bank on Your Voice and Step Up to the Mic. The book is available in print and on Kindle, and you can find it at Amazon or Rodney's personal website, rodneysalisbury.com, in the store section. The second song that I heard by Gamble and Huff was Cowboys to Girls okay by the intruders and cowboys to girls was a great song and i remember uh, being in junior high school and getting together with a couple of friends of mine and we had a group and we had white tennis shoes and white pants and i think we had green sweaters and we sang the song cowboys to girls we had routines and everything by the intruders another song by the philadelphia writing team gamble and huff other records I loved by Gamble and Huff, A Brand New Me by Dusty Springfield. That song came to my ears when Aretha Franklin did it. I played my guitar and, and sang this song, A Brand New Me, and I sang the Aretha Franklin version produced by Gamble and Huff, A Brand New Me. In 1972, I really got excited about another song by Gamble and Huff, Backstabbers, okay, by the OJs. Great lyrics. They always wrote great lyrics. Another great song by Gamble and Huff, uh, by Billy Paul, Me and Mrs. Jones. Great song, great ballad about a married couple uh, having a relationship, okay, an affair. And they would meet every day at a certain cafe, uh, 6.30, I know she'll be there, uh, holding hands, making plans. Some of the great lyrics from the great song me and Mrs. Jones. Family Reunion by the OJs. Um, Love Train by the OJs. I can go on with all the different songs that they wrote for 
the OJs that were some of my favorites and great songs by Gamble and Huff. The Jacksons, when the Jacksons left Motown and uh, they couldn't even be the Jackson 5 anymore because Barry Gordy and Motown owned the rights to that name, they named themselves the Jacksons, which included all of the Jacksons we know with the exception of Jermaine who stayed behind at Motown. Well, one of the records they recorded with the Jacksons was a song called Enjoy Yourself. And uh, I really like that song, Enjoy Yourself, Gamble and Huff. Teddy Pendergrass, they did great work with him. Teddy Pendergrass, first when he was with the group Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, they had a whole bunch of great hits. They went on to have great hits with Teddy uh, by himself. Patti LaBelle, they worked with her and they did some great songs. Archie Bell and the Drills. Jerry Butler, Wilson Pickett. Joe Simon, Drowning in the Sea of Love. I used to love that song. That is one of my favorite songs by Gamble and Huff, along with If You Don't Know Me By Now, which was by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. And later on, that song, If You Don't Know Me By Now, was recorded by Simply Red and became a hit all over again. So they wrote some great songs. Bad Luck by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Just a bunch of great tunes. Stairway to Heaven by the OJs. Show You the Way to Go by the Jacksons. They wrote the Soul Train theme, the Soul Train theme that you used to hear all the time, the music that played uh, at the beginning of Soul Train and at the end was written by Gamble and Huff. What a great team. The Love I Lost, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. I'll Always Love My Mama, the same group that did Cowboys to Girls, they did I'll Always Love My Mama. So you had Cowboys to Girls, but I, I remember, I remember. And you had I'll Always Love My Mama. Ba, da, ba, da, ba. Only girl, only girl. I'll Always Love My Mama. I mean, the list goes on. These guys were great. And I'm sure that I've missed a few. But if you go and check their list of hits, you will find a whole lot of songs that you know. They worked with Lou Ross, The Jones Girls, Nancy Wilson, just a whole host of great singers. Today, Kenneth Gamble continues to write, often with Leon Huff, and Philadelphia International continues. He still lives in South Philadelphia and remains active in his community. On May 20th, 2009, Gamble and Huff were named BMI icons at the 57th annual BMI Pop Awards. Together, the duo has collected an astounding 86 BMI Pop and R&B Awards. In May 2010, Kenneth Gamble and Leon Huff were each awarded an honorary doctorate of music from Berklee College of Music. Are you looking for expert advice on advancing your voiceover career? Are you just getting started in the business? Join the Consultants Club and receive monthly coaching on how to read scripts, interpret copy, and get work in the fastest growing business in the world. When you join the Consultants Club, go to RodneySalsbury.com and sign up today. Gamble and Huff were also very political. Let's talk a little bit about their political activism. Throughout the 1970s, Gamble and Huff made music that addressed political and social issues faced by the African American community. Many of their songs articulated the theme of black pride and highlighted the black power movement's struggle for power and self-determination. Representative examples include Billy Paul's Am I Black Enough For You in 1972, The OJ's Give the People What They Want, 1975, and the star-studded Let's Clean Up the Ghetto in 1977. So moved by their music, I started looking around for comments from the writers, and I ran into something on a thing called songwriteruniverse.com. When it comes to what makes a good song, Leon Huff said, a great song has to make you feel a certain way. Songs can make you happy and sad. They can help you fall in love. They have to do something. That's when you get a reaction. There are some songs on the radio that just play and you don't even know they're playing. A song has to capture your ears because that's where it hits you first. Then it's got to soothe your soul. And Kenny Gamble's advice to young songwriters was this. I always advise young songwriters not to put all your eggs in one basket to begin with. Don't pressure yourself to be a starving songwriter. Before we made a living at this, Huff and I wrote on evenings and weekends and worked other jobs. Get your education, get a good job, and then follow your passion. 
And when those songs start paying you, then you can do it full time. We know people who say they can't do anything else, and that simply is not true. We had jobs, we were responsible people, and eventually we were thankful we had royalties coming in so we could just write after a while. It's a very blessed thing when it happens. And we here at Success Talks are proud to celebrate the outstanding writing and producing careers of Gamble and Huff. You can listen to any of Rodney's podcasts at any time. Go to RodneySalisbury.com. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and I urge you to listen to future podcasts where I will continue to try and make you better than before. My goal is to point you in a positive direction to success right here on Success Talks with me, Rodney Salisbury. Change my way.